Hello guys, welcome back to yet another cash game review session. Today we've got our friends Zisan playing 10 Zoom on Pokestars. As always guys, make sure you subscribe if you enjoy the content, free way supporting all the things that I do. And enjoy the video guys, I'll see you in the next one. We're good to go. So, little recap. Because um, it's been quite a good video, so I don't know if I put it on YouTube, so... Half of the crowding is missing, which is a shame, because I don't want to go over it again. Maybe not half, a bit less than half. But I think you've played quite well so far. I think a bit overly aggressive, such as, you know, C-betting blindly with everything, but at least you recognize different boards and stuff like that. I think you played this ace-five really well. For example, checking about the flop. You know, even though that he should be leading apparently 100% on that flop, which is surprising, um, you're just not going to see that a lot in-game, so... Yeah, as it stands, probably a bit aggressive, but it's going to be winning. So the last time we looked at, we three bet, five bet jacks, blind versus blind, the most standard thing you've ever seen. And we, you guys can see what happens, but there's nothing to be said about this, really, apart from well played. Super standard. Even if people are under four betting, like I say, you know, a hand like jacks, the times that he has a better hand, like overall, it's so unlikely that it doesn't really matter when you lose a buy-in. So this is why you need to be rolled, guys, because you need to make sure that you... You need to make sure that you're rolled, that it's not too stressful. You need to be You need to be okay losing a buy-in. I know that's, coming, that's you know, pretty ridiculous coming from me, who uh, tilts hard after losing a buy-in. But yeah, make sure you're rolled. Ace-4, again, I'm probably just checking the Ace-4 on the flop here. So I'm probably checking this flop. I know that you're overseas betting. I, I guess I'm okay with it. I'm probably just folding here on the turn, even though we've picked up a pair now. I expect him to have a lot of, like, pairs, like, sevens and stuff. Even, like, fives with a club. So I'm probably just folding the turn, even though the size is relatively small. As played, as played, what are you doing? Like, what what, do, what, what, what are you trying to achieve here? Do you think a 10 is going to fold? Are you trying to get a 10 to fold? So what's your intention with this bet here? Like, specifically, what are you doing? I don't hate it because we're relatively low down on our range, but, like, surely we just have worse hands. What happens when we have ace-jack with, like, the jack of clubs? Ace-queen with the queen of clubs. We're always taking this line with those hands, right? And we have ace-high. Why don't we just bluff with those? So, again, like, you, you can't just bluff and target, like, extremely specific parts of a range. He, his range could contain some sixes, some flushes, some tens, some pocket pairs, some random king-jack-offs with the, like, you could have this hand, what, with the king of spades, let's say. And you're like, oh, I'm going to get pocket pairs without a club to fold. They might not even fold. And even so, you're specifically looking at fives, sixes. No, fives, sevens, eights, maybe nines. That's a maximum. That is 24 combos. At an absolute maximum. And it's probably less than that. Also, the, the kind of people that call out the small blind then randomly donk lead turns even though that actually the donk lead is probably fine theoretically these are the guys you don't really want to bluff with a pair bluff with nothing and then you can get better nothing to fall please call with like seven get in the fucking bin zisak get in the bin go and put yourself in a bin right now oh i'm bluffing to get pocket pairs to fold that's better than a four and he fucking calls anyway so how bad was our bluff zisan how shit was our bluff Right, anyway, so we check all the flop here, which I think is... Okay, it's a small size, and it's probably okay. It's probably okay. But it's kind of hard out of position, and against under the gun, he's just got a real big advantage. Fat Doris straight, because no fucking problem. What are you checking for? What are you checking for here, bro? I don't hate a check. I, I actually prefer a check with a flush, because then he can back queen X and we can check raise. So, like, if I'm gonna if I'm going to check strong hands here, it's going to be extremely strong hands. The thing is, at these stakes, I don't think you're going to get bluffs from like pocket sevens and pocket sixes or pocket nines often enough. So the reason we should check strong hands on the river, one for pot control, if we think he's going to have a lot of stronger hands, but I'm talking like really strong hands, we should mainly check for deception to allow our opponents to bluff. And I just don't think that your opponents at these stakes are going to bluff all that often. So I just prefer betting here. The good thing as well, you can have hands like ace-ten, ace-jack. Like, ace-8 suited. He's got a lot of two pairs here, and, like, just people aren't going to fold two pairs. So I'm just going three quarters here. If he checks back with a hand like ace-king or ace-jack here, it's disastrous, and he can have all of those hands. He could have a set here. Check your, Did you check your replay of what he had? Ding, ding, fucking ding. No, 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 no. 
Absolutely fucking not. Imagine, imagine being this aggressive and then when you've actually got value, just fucking fannying around. Okay, so we open the ace nine on the button. Standard. I'd be annoyed if you didn't open ace nine on the button. Big blind donks. I think you can go either way here. Some people would donk with non nonsense and our hand is kind of like vulnerable. So I don't even hate raising. Like when he has hands like jack 10, he's probably going to fall to a raise, but he's got two overs and a gut shot. I wouldn't hate a raise on this flop. Considering how aggressive you've been, I wouldn't hate a raise on this flop. We call. The turn comes a nine. Ding, ding, fucking ding. He bets a quarter pot. Now, Zissan, what's wrong with this? Why don't we like this call, Zissan? Why, why did you call? Didn't I raise? Uh, I don't know. You tell me. You tell me, did you raise? What the fuck indeed? So do you think that you should raise there? Because I think you should raise there. And it's even worse if you think you should raise there. Because if you think you should raise there and you haven't, it shows a lack of focus. How many times do I need to say in these reviews? You need to fucking stay focused. Don't know what happened there. Don't know what I was doing. I was sat there fucking. He's probably got two monitors. He's got porn on the other screen. Just like, oh, yeah, okay, whatever. Like, I could understand, again... I can understand calling. The thing is, in position is different. Out of position, you know, we could do a bit more checking and allow them to bluff. In position here, mate, we just need to get more money in. We just literally need to get more money in. Like, look how small he's bet as well. He's obviously a fun player because he's just donked and then donked, which not, neither of these are a thing. We want to get more money in. Look at the stack to pot ratio. It's fucking like 10. It's near enough 10. So the stack to pot ratio... The ratio of the stack in relation to the pot. And the effective stack here is 100 big blinds, 11 big blinds in the middle, 12 big blinds in the middle. It's like nearly 10. We want to put more money in. We've got the effective nuts, man. It's so unlikely he's going to have a better hand. And we're just like, yeah, we'll just call. And the thing is as well, on the river, there's we have the effective nuts. We're beaten by a weird king nine, a weird sixes. And even weirder, 6-9. He shouldn't even have 6-9 because it'd have to be 6-9 offsuit. This is just, just put more money in here. You are leaving so much money on the table, I can't tell you. So, and look at how many rivers there are that are bad. By bad, I mean that give you now not of the effective knots. A jack, a queen, a king, a 10, a 7, an 8. All draws complete on that. A club. I even noticed a fucking club draw. And then to look at how many hands I could call. 7-8 suited. Jack-10 of clubs. King X. I'm, I'm, I'm upset with you. I'm upset with you. Considering this is the dumbest thing as well. When people, when you're really aggressive and you like the idea of being so aggressive, like super aggressive, like the old lagtard style was that when you have good hands, you get paid because people are like, well, he always bets. He always raises. He always does shit. When you're relentlessly aggressive and you've got fucking trips and the nut kicker and they've bet a quarter pot, put more money in. And the fact that he said, oh, I didn't see it. I didn't raise. What the fuck? I don't know what happened there. I'm, uh, he must have just done something weird. Stay fucking focused. Put more money in when you've got good hands at 10 and L. 7, 8 of clubs. If you if you even think about folding this, we're done. If, any, if anybody sends in a review, by the way, and you have 7, 8 of clubs unopened and you fold it, I, I, I literally, I will literally and end, end the uh, session. I'll refuse to do it anymore. Like, I'm, not, I'm not even joking. Because it always wins. Raise. Easy raise. I'll be upset if you call here on the right as well, considering the aggression. Big, big fan of this raise. But I think we're calling Tanjat suited. Arguments a blast. This is a real fun hand to triple off. Even more fun hand to triple off. Yeah, fuck it. All in. Love it, man. Fucking love it. Zisan. You're my favourite. You're actually my favourite. That th This hand is completely made up for that ace nine. And think about this as well. The ace nine, you won. And I had a go at you for it. The seven eight, you lost. You lost a hundred big blind pot. What the fucking hell is this guy doing there? He's in the small blind. Let's talk about the hand. So this guy calls out the small blind. And he dunks on this flop. This is a really good raise. Why is this a really good raise? When we think about bluffs, we want to pick some of our best bluffs. Our best bluffs are hands that have little to no showdown, but equity in the hand. Here, we have a gut shot. We have a backdoor flush draw. Not that amazing, yeah, but how it's kind of hard to have draws. Like, the best hand we could maybe have would be 5-7 suited, but we probably don't open that. So this is one of our best bluffs here. Really glad you went for it. 
Size wise, absolutely fine with it. Anywhere between maybe six and nine would be okay. King on the turn, really good for our range, really bad for his range. We can now get some hands like six, seven suited to fold, stuff like that, maybe four or five suited, shit like that. Some random like sevens, and know we block sevens, maybe even a queen's fold. However, what I am doing here is I'm going bigger for two reasons. One, when I've got really strong hands, I want to put as much money as I can so I can get the stack to pot ratio to one so I can jam the river for value. Two, when I'm bluffing, I want to increase my fold equity, but as big as I can so he can fold more hands. So I'm probably going close to pot here and jamming the river. He snap calls the turn. The only problem with this is that he's going to likely be a fun player and he might be difficult to get like queen x to fold here. But I really like the bluff. Why do I like the bluff? What constitutes a good bluff on flop and turn? Like I said, good equity, but no showdown. What makes a good bluff on the river? Being low down in your range, we've got fucking eight high. So we can get nine high, 10 high, blah, blah, blah to fold. We unblock some folds such as... Um, I don't know, Queen X, he could have hands like some some hearts. We don't have hearts. So that's a pretty, re you know, maybe he's just got something like Ace-10 of hearts, Ace-9 of hearts. And yeah, we've got fucking eight high, man. Just grow up and stick it in. Really big fan of the bluff. So we would like to block some strong hands here. I tell you what, 7-8 of diamonds would be a better bluff slightly because we would then block 6-7 of diamonds and 6-8 of diamonds, which shouldn't be in his range. But the guy's got fucking king four off, so they are in his range. So I'm probably betting bigger on the turn and jamming the river here as I would for value as well with pocket sixes, with six x of hearts, with king queen, with queens, with fours, with aces. Um, but I'm glad to see you fire this river with eight high. And it doesn't matter that we got called down. Now we not need to snap tag this guy. Tag him as a whale, right? Yep, yeah, squeeze it. Uh, I'm not asked about this guy's stack because I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna squeeze and then call it off because we can be ahead. So. Just, just squeeze this. This this for me is such a good spot to squeeze. I, I think you didn't because you saw his stack. So at least you're paying attention to that, which I'm a fan of. But it just works so often, man. Like if we make this 12 big blinds as well and then he jams, like we get a good prize and we can be hurt. Again, for all the, for, for all the aggression that you're showing, I, I think that you're missing out in some spots where you can be aggressive. And just fold this flop. He's bad. Nah, just fold. Just literally fold. So many bad turns. So many bad turns, so difficult to improve. We've got top power with a five kicker. We basically fold on most turns anyway. And he's bet into three players. He's bet big into three players. Just fold this flop. His bluff should be really strong as well. His bluff should be like hands like 10 jack, queen 10 with a club and shit on the flop. Jacks, we can four bet get in. Uh, sometimes I'm calling. I'm primarily four betting up. So we go for the call, which I think is okay. Uh, I'm okay raising the flop, to be honest. Calling's also fine. Falling turn and it being pretty fucking dicey. Check. Like to see the check, but also I think his bluffs are gonna. Okay, it doesn't doesn't go for the triple, and that's something worth noting as well. Um, that he three bats, bat, bat, check. I actually don't mind his line. I actually really don't mind his line. If he jams the river, it comes down to opponents, but I'm probably generally folding. King, queen, you can do one of three things here. I don't really mind if you fold. I don't really mind if you call. I don't really mind if you raise. Different ranges will say different things at different frequencies. At 10 and L, you're probably not getting bluffed all that much, so I don't mind folding. Um, but calling, I think, is fine. This is a really nice hand to, to four bet in position because in position, we can four bet like the offsuit combos because we're, we're mainly trying to get folds. I don't want to four bet fold a hand like king, queen suited. I just want to take a flop, so... I'm generally going to fall back hands like King Jack off, King Queen off when I fall back bluff. Not much else to do on this flop, but call. Not much else to do on this turn, but call. And it gets real dicey when you start getting tripled on. But as we saw, the King 9 gave up, you know, maybe this guy. I think you'll see a lot of doubles and I think you'll see a lot of give ups on River. I think that's across all stakes from my experience. People bottle it on 200 ACR all the time and I tell them to fucking grow up. Dicey with the size in, but we block King Jack suited. We block Queens. We block Kings. Please check. <laughs> yes. And then we check back. Okay. And I don't mind his line as well. Um, I, and I like his give up on the river. I actually think these guys fucking... I hope 10NL doesn't have players like these two and you because like you're actually playing relatively decent. So on the river, even though 
we don't really want to fold too much. I think that if he was to jam the river, we have so many better hands. I am never going to raise the flop or turn. Not never, but I'm not going to, I'm never going to raise a turn with a jack or 9-10 or a full house. So on the river, if he jams, I can have queens very slim. I can have queen jack of hearts. I could have queen jack of clubs. I could have ace jack, king jack. I could have 9-10. I could have pocket eights with the eight of spades. So many hands I could have better than king queen. So I think I'd probably end up folding. Um, but again, we don't have to consider it. And this is the thing. If people are going to give up a lot, I don't mind his give up, by the way. I wouldn't have hated a bluff because at least he blocks 9-10. But, um, but yeah. So everyone always says, oh, what, what, what do we do if he jams the river? And it's like, well, just think about it. Like People overfold the turn as well because they're scared of getting jammed on on the river, but not enough people do it. Not enough people triple barrel bluff. Right, this ace jack looks like a fucking fun one. I saw 70 big blinds in the middle. Just mock this pre, man. Mock this fucking pre. Eh, half the time. I just wouldn't bother, man. Just wouldn't bother. He's not playing a full start. He's going to have a lot more calls. At least we have the ace of spades here, so I'm okay batting. And I'm okay batting about this size. I don't mind going small. I don't mind going about half pot here. Okay, we at least drill an open ender. We, the thing is here on this turn, it's really bad for our range. It's quite good for him. And look at the stack to pot versus his stack. You are going to get check jammed on here extremely often. He could have eights, nines, tens. He could have like ace, ten suited, like ace, ten of hearts. He could have nine, ten suited. He could have pocket fours. He could have queen, jack. He could have six, seven. A lot of these hands will check jam because of the board texture, which I think is fine. So although I don't hate this bet, I think that you're just going to get jammed on a lot and it's well annoying when you do. So I really don't hate checking back here. And it's taken me a while to learn it, even though it's a card where I'm like, oh, I picked up equity, I want to bluff, which in general I would say is fine. On these type of board textures against like these type of ranges when he's already called the flop, I don't know, I think you're going to get jammed on a lot. What I don't mind about this is when we have the ace of spades, we can bluff on a spade river, which I'm pretty sure you would be doing. So I wouldn't hate it. I wouldn't even hate tripling. Again, we don't really need to go this big because when we put 20 big blinds in the middle and he calls, the pot is 72 big blinds and he's only going to have 50 odd behind. So I don't think we need to go this big. Maybe a few big blinds less. It's part of the raise your edge course. And now we're in a soft spot on the river. No, we're not. FT will call it one time. Queen 10 suited. Reasonable three back here. Sizing's okay. It's a little big for me, but like, I think it's fine at these stakes. Yeah, and again, so this is a board that we can bet bigger on here. And I don't mind betting this type of hand because we have immediate fold equity against like king highs and ace highs and stuff. Um, and we have the backdoor flush draw, so I don't really know. Let's have a quick look in GTO Wizard. Agreed. Um, we had one last week where, you know, it wasn't exactly the easiest. So, okay, it wants to check quite a lot. But the, the good thing is, so again, we look at aces here that checks a lot, right? Because we want to balance hands. So we're looking at jacks, tens, nines. Look at how often it wants to bet nines. Whereas aces, it wants to check a lot more literally just for deception to, to allow bluffs and to allow our opponents to catch up as well. But if you look at Queen 10 suited, it is mixing, but look at how it's mixing. So you might not be able to see it very well on the right-hand side, and it shows the combinations there. So this one, the second combo here, it always wants to check, and that's because it's Queen 10 of hearts, and we don't have the backdoor flush draw. So overall, the range is mixing, but if you actually look at each individual combo, we're pretty much always betting. The reason it'll do this is obviously we have the backdoor flush draw, so we have more equity with the other Queen 10s, but the reason we'll back queen 10 suited uh, as opposed to let's say king queen suited king queen suited will have more showdown we can we can basically target a lot of king highs with these hands and maybe even some ace highs so yeah so it does want to bat here um sizing wise it's mainly going it's kind of mixing uh but big size is fine even half pot's fine on this kind of texture as well so yeah just want to see what it did there yep three bat see no reason not to Pretty sexy looking flop. Don't mind going bigger here, but again, I noticed that you go in the small sizes on the more disconnected rainbow boards. Uh, just call, call, and then hate life and fold river. Nothing to do but call on this flop. Technically bad. You could have six of them suited, three combos. Easy call versus that size. They're, they're, they're going to have ace queen here, or always. You ready? Gonna go check, check. You're gonna lose to Ace Queen. They really bet an Ace Queen here. Oh, 
Okay, same thing. I don't know what to say about the river. Th this needs noting. That river bat is is so shit by them. They nearly folded out of chop. I, I don't know what to say about this river. He shouldn't be doing that. Calling here is just nasty. I can forgive because of the price that we're getting. I could forgive a fold here. I was kind of right anyway that it felt like ace queen. Um, king queen similar. That this is just it, it's an overplay from them. Think about it. Like, what are we actually going to call flop and then turn with that's worse than king queen? Queen jack suited if we three bet. Queen ten. I'm just folding pre. Jacks. I'm folding turn. We have ace queen queens kings aces. I guess we could have some like ace ace king of clubs and stuff, but by the river, like they just they really don't do well with their hand when we've played the hand this way. So just note that they fucking massively overplay hands. No, this is this is this is a classic error. This this is shit. This really is shit. This call. How many times multi way we have to do things different, boys? We have to do things different. There's so many reasons why this is bad. The main one we are going to be out of position to this guy. We're going to be sandwiched in between two players. Hard to realize equity. Not playing a full stack, probably not even three bet bluffing that much, so his range is going to be stronger. Not playing a full stack, almost definitely going to at least call. We are not closing the action. He can still go all in or re-raise here. Probably not going to do it often, but we're not closing the action. We don't get to see a flop by calling here necessarily. Doesn't mean we call and we go to a flop in position. We call, then we have to see what this guy's done. And then look at the pot, the stats to pot ratio, right? So if he calls, the pot's going to be 32 big blinds, he will call. So the pot's 32 big blinds. The SPR is basically two versus these guys. Do you know how difficult it is? The point of these hands here, when we're playing 100 big blinds deep, we can call and then we can hit some flops where we can still float or we can call with like a gut shot and stuff like that. We could hit a gut shot and a backdoor flush draw and like an overcard or some shit and he bets and we just have to fold. We don't get to realize our equity here. Can't tell you how... It's such a common mistake because it's like, well, I'm not folding queen jack suited. And on the face of it, it's like, well, yeah, I don't want to fold Queen Jack suited. But when you actually consider that you've got a player left to act, you know, that you're not going to get to realize your equity because you're sandwiched in the middle of two players, this becomes... When when we call pre, it becomes a slightly, you know, winning play to this is... I, I promise you, this will just burn money in the long run. And it's so tempting to call, and believe me, I'm guilty of it as well. But it's just going to burn money. Don't do that shit. Just fold pre. Very easy fold pre. Six is a bit of a fishy call, but I'm okay with it here. I I'm okay with, like, overcalling in these kind of spots. I don't think you're going to get squeezed enough. I don't mind seeing a flop with this hand. Set of threes. Andy Donk's pop. Fucking slurp. Don't call. So, uh, on one hand, because these bets are big, I don't really want to raise. But, like, at the same time, again, so many cards kill the action. When you've got sets... I, I think I said it, a general rule. When you've got sets, when you, when you flop a set and somebody bets into you, raise... 100 big blinds deep, you basically can't go wrong with that with that um, advice. We don't have to go that big just because of his stack. But yeah, no, fine, yeah. Calls, obviously, we see a shit turn. Just bet small and jam river and just if he's got a flush, good luck to him. So many reasons why we don't want to bet too big. Bit better, but look, when he calls here 35, he's going to have 35 big blinds behind. There's going to be 65 in the middle. The bigger we bet, the more he's going to fold. We don't want him to fold when we got a set. Bet smaller. He's going to have a flush, by the way, because he, he, like, dunk part is just very, very flush heavy here. And we don't get that. And he cashed out the fucking... Tell him to grow up in the chat. Uh, Ace three suited. We open up the gun. We go three-way. I think checking's fine. Ace king would be three betting here. Somewhere between probably 11 and 12. <laughs> like it. And with the nut flush draw, we have to call and we should bluff. We have ace queen here. We have queen jack. We have occasionally king queen. We have queen queen. And we've got ace high. So, oh my God, right? This on the left, he's just going to have it. Like, mate, I tell you, like, oh my God. I don't give a fuck what stakes you play here. Wait, has he got a full stack? Is that, is the rake really that high? Taking nine fucking big blinds. Shit, am I going to be able to beat fucking 10 and L with this rake? Mate, I can't tell you enough. If you play any stake from 10 and L to fucking 500 and L, and you are against anyone other than a proper reg, then they just have aces in this spot. They just have aces in this spot. Probably not even kings. Maybe a little bit of kings. 
But theoretically, this is fine. And it's such a stupid spot here. It's such a horrible spot where it's like, mate, tell me this guy is going to have a bluff here. Tell me this guy is going to fall back ace queen off here. There's just fucking no chance of it, man. We're already being really tight here. I fold ace queen here a lot. We're already being so tight that he's just going to be even tighter. Let's have a look at the, the, the GTO wizard rangers. I want to see what this is, what this says. Yeah, because like, yeah, ace queen off, king queen suited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Under the gun's going to fall back king queen suited, aren't they? Yeah, they're going to fall back ace five suited. They're, they're going to fall back ace ten suited in these positions. Fucking nobody does it, man. This is the most aces thing I've ever seen. And I know it sounds easy because we've just ran into aces, but literally before he even did it, I'm just like, look, he's going to fucking have it. Like, he's just going to have it. And it's so dumb because I don't know what to do in this spot. Theoretically, yeah, fuck it. Let's go all in. I mean, this should be smaller anyway, but like, ace king. Okay, ace king, it, it can call here. So just call, but then you stack off on the first flop anyway. But, mate, this is just fucking, just so aces, bro. That's a That's not a good board. Oh. Wait, hang on, hang on. Oh, he's got a set of sevens, okay. Bet bigger than this on the river because of what we're representing. Uh, bet bigger than this on the river. I I think he calls sevens for what it's worth, but bet bigger. So what do we do against four bet? Just fucking throw up. I don't know is this, I don't know. I don't want to tell you to three bet full days, King. But <laughs> when this happens to me, you know the first thing I'm doing is giving him the net tag. You know... He could have all the bluffs in the world and he just so happened to have aces, but... Exactly, I, I always say that. Like, don't make generalizations, but he's not bluffing. Do you know what I mean? It, it's, a, it's a difficult spot because I can't just say fold because he's not bluffing, but fold because he's probably not bluffing. <laughs> so ace. Why is everyone donking? Fuck off, raise it. Let's go. I like, I like your choices for raises, by the way, when you've got donked on too. Uh, the problem is when people dunk and then call, they're probably not doing a lot of folding. I like this restraint. We wish we'd have seen that turn. Um, either checking or betting extremely large here. And honestly, you're just going to get fucking check called by like queen nine off. Okay, I like it. Uh, I like going really big there. Over betting, fine. All right, Zissan, fucking simmer down, bro. This is just, no, just don't do this. No, surely no rangers are doing this. No, 8-9 suited, not in there. No, not 8-9 suited fucking finger wag. 8-9 suited's the worst one. Do it with 7-8 suited or 6-7 suited. Why is 8-9 suited shit? What happens when the flop comes 10 jack queen? You lose a buy-in. Every time. Doesn't matter what they've got. <laughs> you can have deuces. Yeah, 7-8 se seven, eight, uh, seven, eight of clubs. Yeah, yeah, get, get four bet. Don't you dare peel. Don't you fucking dare peel. Don't you wait 50 minutes into a video to peel a 4-bet to a big 4-bet with 8-9 suited in these positions. No, you're gonna just fucking... Just fuck you, man. What are you doing? <sighs> Don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do any of this. Don't 3-bet. Once you 3-bet and you get 4-bet, don't call. Yeah, we might as well fucking blast off. Oh, well, here we go. At least we saved the best till last. Yep, call and then jam river and get called by his king anyway. <laughs> Have his king of diamonds. What do I know, guys? What do I know? I'm not, I'm not even going to talk about it. I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna talk about it. Just just fucking don't do it. So there are rangers, right, by the way, that will three bat and then they'll call a four bat. The reason we play these hands, the reason it wants to play these hands, the EV of these hands is so little. Just you're talking to a guy that loves suited connectors. I guess we have to call now, yeah. So it pure calls here, but look how look at how infrequently it three bats these hands, and it's definitely not doing this. The four bet's not even small. This is this is against a um, nineteen big blind four bet. This is twenty five. Rakes higher here as well than it is at ten. Uh, than it is at fifty. He's going to be more nutted. Probably not like bluffing like hands like king jack suited. If you at least if you did it with five six suited or six seven suited or seven eight suited, I'd be a bit more forgiving of it because you know you've probably this is the right. I tell you what, this is the problem. This is the problem. 
people see things that they think they're allowed to do and they just take that and extrapolate it to, to being able to do it. So they'll see a range that will three bat flat suited connectors, right? And they think that firstly it applies to all suited connectors. Eight, nine suited, it won't because of reverse implied odds. Secondly, that's assuming that, you know, the rate structures are correct and it's against like 19 big blinds. This is 25. This is a big four bet. It then assumes that people are going to have enough four bet bluffs. It also only basically does it for board coverage. Just don't do it. Don't even three bet this. This is under the gun versus fucking middle position. This is what under the gun should be four betting. Fuck me. Do you think King 10 suited four betting at 10 and L under the gun versus MP? Do you think King Jack suited fucking four betting 67% of the time? Do you think nines is four betting? But then look at the value range. So it, 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 if we take out hands like nines, tens, king ten suited, ace ten suited, and just leave it with like this, look at our equity against this. Let's get poker stove out. It's been a while. We'll put even some ace queen out. We're 30%, bro. And that's against like, honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if you're looking at this. And you've got 25%. Listen, leave my fucking Minecraft simulator alone. <laughs> I don't need to go on about it all day. It's shit. You know it's shit. Don't do it. It actually baffles me, though, to be fair, because, like, believe me, I'm all about suit connectors, and so when a ranger say that I can, you know, I can peel a 4 bat with 7-8 suited, I get a little bit horny and I, I call a 4 bat. but considering that how relatively well you've played throughout the session, do you think this is a winning play? Like, when you see that 4 bat, do you think that you can make money by calling here? Just don't do it with 8-9 suited. It's the worst hand to do it with. Don't even consider. I swear to God, this queen 6 doesn't go in the bin. You, you, you have got to be trolling me. You have got to be fucking winding me up. Are you fucking... Did you just think in the last five minutes you're going to wind me up? I swear. I swear. That's the, that's the only logical conclusion I can come from here. I am Zissan. I played really good poker, and then five minutes towards the end, I thought, "Fuck it, let's 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 see how much money I can do off real nice." I really want to shove, and I want I, I want you to call because it'd be so fucking funny. No, because you're gonna call and you're gonna be right. You're gonna you're gonna call and he's just gonna have some fucking garbage. Mate, just imagine playing this solid and at the last end, at the fucking, like, 10 minutes before the end, just shitting all over the place. I get what you're doing here. There's dead money in the pot. I, I get it. I like the idea of it. You've got fucking queen six, bro. You've got queen six. Considering small blind is three bet and wide and, and cold call is not so strong. Yeah, in which case, fuck it. Just three bet your entire range. You need, to, you need to have reasons why we 4-bet. If you've got King Jack off, by all means, let's fucking go for it. You've got Queen 6, man. This is the problem as well. When somebody fucking cold calls a 3-bet, they want to see a flop. They want to see a flop real bad. They're going to see a flop, bro. They're going to see a fucking flop. You've got, to the, you've got to a fucking flop with the SPR of 1.5 with Queen 6. Think about it. Imagine... Imagine you try and tell this to anyone with a brain and you go, right, so I get to the flop with queen six uh, in a four bet pot and the flop comes ace four six and you're like, what, sorry, in a, in a what? In a four bet pot. And they go, yeah, yeah, so there's 64 big blinds in the middle. I've got queen six. Just imagine having that conversation with somebody. Just fucking imagine it. I, I'm not even going to talk about as played. You can fuck off. I, I'm not going to give you the satisfaction of talking about post flop when we're when, when we've gone to a flop with 64 big blinds in the middle with queen fucking six. Cut th th this is literally what I was talking about before. That I used to I used to play 25 and 50, and I was losing at it because I would end up making a punt like this. Yes, it's made you a stack here, but I, I would like when we when we don't drill the fucking diamond on the river, we've just lost 40 odd big blinds with nine high for no reason. Here we've just lost fucking. 50 big blinds with queen six. Those add up real fast, man. They add up real fucking quick, I promise you. And that, that they will be the difference in why you're losing at like 10 and L. Honestly, well played but before, before those couple of punts. I think you played solidly. But this is the problem, guys. This is the fucking problem. And we talk about this a lot. You need to stay focused. You need to not tilt. I promise you, you don't understand how much it's going to fuck you up in the long run.
I can't. I, I really want to just scream it. I really just want to like. I don't know. Fucking get naked and 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 say this again. So you. So it sticks in all of your head that like you need to stay focused. You can't be doing these things when you're not focused or or whatever. Sort your shit out.